OK, so we're going to have a look at some divisibility rules. So there's a nice way of checking if an integer is divisible by 9. You just need to find the sum of its digits, check if that's divisible by 9. If you get quite a big answer after summing the digits, we can apply the same procedure over and over. And the same sort of rule works for divisibility by 3. Just see if your sum of digits is divisible by 3 and repeat as needed. So the first question we're going to answer is, why do these rules work for 3 and 9? So what's special about 3 and 9? And it helps to take a step back here and think, this is actually a consequence of the fact that we have a base 10 number system. So this sort of rule wouldn't necessarily work in other base systems. And what we'll do is, before going into a more formal proof, we'll just have a look at an example to illustrate what's going on. So let's say we want to check whether this number, 54,321, is divisible by 3 or 9. Let's write this, just using our knowledge of base 10, this 5 is really 5 times 10,000. Then the 4 is 4, lots of 1,000. Then we've got 300s, 2 tens, and finally the 1 is just a 1. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write all of our powers of 10 just in a slightly different way. So we'll write 10,000 as 9,999 plus 1. Then we'll write 1,000 as 999 plus 1. We'll write 100 as 99 plus 1, and finally we write 10 as 9 plus 1, and the 1 we leave alone. Okay, so what we can do here is we can spot the, let's start with divisibility by 9. We've got a multiple of 9 here, we've got a multiple by 9 here, here, and here. So when we expand the brackets, all of these terms are going to give us just some integer multiplied by 9, so a multiple of 9 here. And what we're really interested in, for our number to be divisible by 9, we need to be able to write it as an integer times 9. So this part is fine. Then we think about what's left over. Well, it's really interesting here. What's left over is actually just our sum of digits. So 5 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 and just plus the 1 here. So what we've got in the end is just our sum of digits. You can see the sum of digits here is 15. So sadly, we've got something times 9 plus 15, where this is an integer, so this isn't going to be divisible by 9. But then, if we wanted to do divisibility by 3, because we've got an integer times 9, we can write this as triple that integer times 3, again just plus, it's the sum of digits once again. So to check divisibility by 3, we've got an integer times 3, so we're only interested in the remaining piece, which happens to be the sum of our digits. Is this divisible by 3? And here 15 is divisible by 3, so that tells us that 54,321 is divisible by 3, but not by 9. So now we're going to have a look at the more general picture in base 10. So let's imagine we've got a generic integer expressed in base 10 with digits am, am minus 1, all the way down to a0. We can write this as the sum of powers of 10 multiplied by our digits. Once again, we can split up our 10 into 9 plus 1, and this can be useful. So there are a few ways of seeing why the divisibility by 9 rule works, but one way to get started is we can think about 9 plus 1 to the power of k. What is the binomial expansion of this? Well, we get 9 to the power of k plus k choose 1 times 9 to the power of k minus 1, just times by 1 to the power of 1, and so on. Then we get all the way to k choose k minus 1 multiplied by 9, multiplied by 1 to the k minus 1. Then our final term in the binomial expansion is just plus 1 there. And this is really useful, actually, because now you can see all of these terms, other than this final one, have a power of 9 in them. So what we've got here is actually a multiple of 9 plus 1. So this turns out to be really useful, because now when we consider 9 plus 1 to the k multiplied by a k, you can see that this is just going to be some multiple of 9 plus 1 times a k. So this multiple of 9 times a k gives you another multiple of 9. Then we're just left with a multiple of 9 plus a k. And there's another way of interpreting all of this. We could think about things using modular arithmetic. So we could actually look at all of this mod 9. Because all you care about for a number to be divisible by 9, you're just interested in, is that number equivalent to 0 mod 9? So if we take 10 to the power of k, you can see that 10 is equivalent to 1 modulo 9. So this is equivalent to 1 to the power of k, so just 1 mod 9. And then this tells you that 10 to the power of k times your ak, this is going to be just equivalent to your ak mod 9. 
But then what we really care about is the sum of all of these. So let's have a look what happens with our sum. So we'll just write it without the index here. It's the sum of our 10 to the power of k times ak. We can now write this as the sum of, it's going to be some multiple of 9 plus our ak. Then we can also write this as we've got the sum of lots of different multiples of 9. So when we add these together, we get a different multiple of 9 plus the sum of our digits, our sum of ak. And what we could also do is if you want to go down the interpreting it mod 9 route, you can see very clearly here that this is going to be just equivalent to the sum of our digits, our sum of ak, modulo 9. And this helps us just see a bit clearer why our original integer, this is going to be divisible by 9, if and only if the sum of our digits is also divisible by 9. Because we've got a multiple of 9 plus our sum of digits, or we can also think of it as our original number is equivalent to the sum of its digits, modulo 9. And we can apply the same sort of thinking for multiples of 3. So we can write this as a multiple of 3 because it's a multiple of 9, then plus, once again, the sum of our digits is our leftover piece. Then if we think about this now modulo 3, this is going to be equivalent to the sum of digits, modulo 3, because we've got a multiple of 3 plus the sum of our digits. So once again, we can see here that our original integer is going to be a multiple of 3 if and only if the sum of its digits is also a multiple of 3. So now to finish off answering this question, why 3 and 9 have these nice divisibility rules but other numbers don't in base 10, we'll have a look at the broader picture. So in base n, if you've got an integer, and we can write this as the sum of your digits multiplied by powers of n, then as before we can write n as n minus 1 plus 1, and you'll see that you'll get a multiple of n minus 1 plus the sum of your digits left over. So this gives us a really nice divisibility rule for n minus 1 when we work in base n. So your number is divisible by n minus 1 if and only if the sum of its digits in base n is divisible by n minus 1 too. So that kind of explains where our rule for 9 comes from. But what about 3? Well, this just relies on the fact that 3 is a factor of 9. So more generally, if we've got, let's say, q as a factor of n minus 1, then what we can say is this sum here a multiple of n minus 1 plus the sum of our digits. Because we've got a multiple of n minus 1, this is also going to be a multiple of q, because q is a factor of n minus 1. So what we've actually got is a multiple of q plus the sum of our digits. So then we can say, not only for n minus 1, but for all of its factors, actually, we can say just informally that an integer is divisible by q if and only if the sum of its digits, when we express it in base n, is also divisible by q. So the moral of the story here is if you want to choose a base system, base n, so that we can use this divisibility rule over and over for lots of different numbers, it's a good idea to choose n so that n minus 1 has got lots of factors. Of course, there are lots of other nice divisibility rules out there. So for example, in base 10, 2, 5, and 10, they're really easy to check, you just need to check the last digit. And this is because 2, 5 and 10, these are factors of 10. So if you wanted to use this rule, where you check just your last digit, you actually want to choose base n, so that n has got lots of factors. And unfortunately it's quite difficult in practice to combine these two, because n and n minus 1 don't actually have any common factors other than 1. So it's quite difficult in practice to choose a base system where you have a lot of this rule of sum of digits being divisible by that number, but also lots where you can check the last digit.